Ready? Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome. I call the meeting to order the November 17th, 2021 Town of Norfolk Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Um, in, a, in accordance with provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 38, Section 20, notice is hereby given. Recording in progress. That the Recording zoning, stopped. Notice is hereby given that the Zoning Board of Appeals will meet on Wednesday, November 17th, 2021 at 7 p.m. in meeting room 124, 1 Liberty Lane, Norfolk, Massachusetts. Additional public access to this meeting shall be done via Zoom online video conferencing. This application will allow users to view the meeting and provide comments during allocated windows. To join, follow the web link, web link or call the dial-in number listed under the start time call order Please be advised this meeting will be audio and video recorded for future rebroadcast by Norfolk Community Television. Before we get into our first public hearing, I'd like to, we have two new board members this evening. I'd like to welcome them and introduce them. We have Courtney Starling. Thank you. Thank you, Courtney. We also have Tyler Tellis. Thank you very much, folks. Yeah, appreciate you. your volunteering. Our first public hearing this evening uh, was an application by Lenbury Corp regarding 228 Dedham Street for two special permits. It had been continued from uh, our last meeting of October 20th, and I believe the applicant has requested a further continuance to our next scheduled meeting for December 15th. That's correct. Okay, thank you. So if I could have a, a motion to accept that continuance. Um, I second. You want to no, make, a, you you make a motion? I make a motion. Okay, we have, we have a motion. And I'll second it. And discussion, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. So that'll be on for the December 15th. I don't know if we want to have a time allotted for that. Yeah, we do. We do. We yeah. do need a time. Yeah, we can, we can keep it at the same time. All right, so that'll be at 7 p.m. on December 15th. Our, let's see, our, our next scheduled public hearing isn't until 7.05. We have another minute or two. So why don't I take care of a quick housekeeping matter. I'm gonna jump ahead. If you have the agenda in front of you under correspondence uh, relative to 77 Boardman Street. Um, we, have, we have a letter dated November 2nd, 2021 from attorney Kevin Hampy, who represents the petitioner Leticia Arigia. And the letter reads as follows. Dear Mr. Martin, please be advised this office represents Leticia Arigio of 77 Boardman Street, Norfolk, Massachusetts, who is the petitioner in the above entitled matter. The petitioner, Leticia Arigio, through her attorney, hereby requests the withdrawal of, without prejudice of her application submitted on February 5th, 2020 for a special permit to convert a single family dwelling to a two family dwelling located at 77 Boardman Street accordance with the above listed sections of the Town of Norfolk Zoning Bylaws and Massachusetts General Law. This request is made in accordance with the order of remand from the Massachusetts Land Court dated October 14, 2021. So we have a, a request from the petitioner's uh, counsel to withdraw her original application without prejudice. So if I could have a, a motion to approve that withdrawal and entertain that make a motion to withdraw the petition for application submitted on February 5th, 2020 for special permit to convert a single family dwelling to a two family dwelling located at 77 Boardman Street. And this is regarding our case, case number 2020-02, it was a request for a special permit. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Or any discussion? Anybody in the audience have any comments on this? Any discussion? All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Okay, take care of that. At seven, it's seven oh five. We have a public hearing scheduled for a variance request regarding uh, five Hanover Street. I believe we have received a request to also continue that public hearing, is that correct? That's correct. And I think the request is not to continue it to our December meeting, but to our, our regularly scheduled meeting in January, which would be the third Wednesday of January. I don't have the date. It would be the 19th? January 19th. Do we want to have a time for that? It 
could, in terms of, since we don't have anything as of yet, you could put it right at 7 o'clock. Why, why don't we start it right at 7 o'clock? Mm -hmm. So if I could have a motion to continue 5 Hanover Street to January 19th at 7 o'clock, to January 19th, 2022 at 7 o'clock, I'd entertain that motion. I'll make a motion to yeah, I'll, I'll continue yeah. 5 Hanover Street variance to January 19th, 2022, 7 a.m., 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Even better than 7 a.m. Even better than 7 a.m. <laughs> 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 <That's funny. laughs> we have a second. Is there any discussion? Is there anything from the public on, on this? All those in favor, say aye. 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 So that's going to be continued till <coughs> 2022, January. Seven oh seven. It is seven oh seven. How about that? You can never get that right. Um, <laughs> we have a our next scheduled public hearing at seven oh seven is the thirty three Wedmay yeah Midway Branch special permit request from the DPW, and I believe we have the applicant's engineer Bill Buckley with us mm -hmm. via Zoom this evening. Hi, good evening, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. Also here is uh, Leah Crane, who's the DPW director. Good evening. So, um, if I could, I don't know if I can share the screen or not. Yeah, we're going to make you co-host in a second, Bill, so you can okay. share your screen. So, I'll just, I'll just start right now, actually. So, we're here this evening for a, a special permit for a use for the, the reconstruction of an existing salt shed at the DPW yard, which is located at 33 Medway Branch. <clears throat> so, this is... Um, project that has to go through site plan special permit, <clears throat> excuse me, through the planning board. And we've already um, gone through that process. And I believe they closed the public hearing at our last meeting. And um, now we're before this board for the use, which is um, you know, a allowed use by special permit. It is, um, as I stated, it's a reconstruction of an existing building. So currently the building right now is about 73 by 40 feet. It is about 2,900 square feet, and we propose to rebuild it so that it's roughly 80 feet by 56 feet, so approximately a 50% increase in size. Uh, it'll be in the same location, and great. Let me share this quickly. So as Bill's um, getting ready to share the screen with you, in terms of voting, you can pick a... Pick associate member you want to flip a coin to, if you have five because you don't have uh, this is actually it's been continued so this is actually the first time you'll be um, okay reviewing it and okay. actually deliberating and taking testimony on it um you right, do so it for but since you have two associates you can I, yeah i think tyler walked into the room a little early tonight we'll <laughs> pick on me first Please. we'll pick on you first perfect let's do it right. there you go so uh, what I put input, up so. before, the, before the board is a, um, this is the existing conditions plan. It's an aerial view of the site. Um, it's a 10 acre site. So you can see I'm outlining it with my hand here. This is Medway Branch over here to the, the north. Over here on the east side is Barnstable Road. And down here on the south is Wellfleet Drive. That's right. The, um, the salt shed, the existing salt shed is right here in the middle of the site. This is the DPW offices and garage in the front here is the gas pumps. And over here is just some storage area. So what we're proposing is to remove this building and replace it with a building um, slightly bigger. So let me stop sharing this. And I want to, I'm going to reshare now the site plan. And if you're following along with drawings in your hands, this is, I'm now on sheet three of our, our site plan. So let me zoom in on this up to get a little better view. So in a lighter area, in this area here is the existing salt shed, as I was saying, it's, mm -hmm. it's 40 by 73. This heavier, darker area on the outside is 80 by 56. And you can see what we've done is we've maintained the location as far as the southern portion of it. And this is the part that's important in our mind 
because it's this is the area where there's homes just beyond the property line. So the um, this will be the proposed building. Some of the work we're, addition, we're additionally doing is some additional pavement down in the end here. And this is so we can get tractor trailers pulled out and backed into it. And we're also doing some, because we're doing um, some additional pavement and the building is going to be bigger, we're also doing some stormwater management in this area. So down in this area here, which picks up the pavement from the rear of the building or the front of the building as it faces the south, this will be a small um, basin that it's a rain garden and it will capture and infiltrate the runoff. There's a little stone trench here. So the runoff will come off the pavement, hit the stone trench. Some little bit of infiltration will go on in this area here is grass. And what it does is it comes off, that runs off the grass and then goes into this basin where it further infiltrates. Up around this salt shed, um, we, we're just putting in stone trenches on either side of it. And if you, again, if you have the plan in front of you, if you turn to your sheet four, you can see that um, this is a, a building that what we call it, I call it a, a metal tubular building with a fabric cover. I see them everywhere on DPW yards. They're not permanent structures, although they are pretty permanent, but they have um, their fabric covered and you normally see them as salt sheds. <clears throat> Some of the things we're doing here, the reason for this is the first is the existing salt shed just reached the end of its useful life. They've had um, uh, damage in it and storms they've had to repair. So now it's time to replace it. Um, the volume is inadequate, which forces the town to have more truck trips uh, to it than um, it, it would like. And then what happens sometimes is those truck trips, if you have a bad storm, you'll have truck trips in the evening, which become an issue for the neighbors because of the truck movement at night. So if you can have more volume, you can have, you can plan better. You're going to, I don't know why I keep <coughs> choking, I'm sorry. The, um, you can plan better and, and avoid those nighttime trips. Um, the other thing is, is the existing door is too small. The trucks cannot even get into it. So what happens is that they have to um, dump the salt outside of it and then bucket it into the, into the um, building existing. And as everybody knows, we spend a construction site when trucks back up or uh, front end loaders back up, they beep, beep, beep. So that is an annoyance as well. This will allow trucks, the size of this will allow trucks to actually pull in and dump inside the um, structure so you won't have that additional um, movement on the outside. Finally, the, the, the ramp, which is down in this area right here. So they, they come out of the salt shed and bring the salt over here. Trucks are sitting down here. This is about a four foot high ramp. And so this will fix the grade in there. Right now, it's, it's kind of an upward grade, not much, but in the winter with, with ice and snow, it's enough. So this will flatten that out and you'll be able, and we'll be able to have a, a safer activity in that area. Finally, what I wanted to point out is along the bottom here, um, we're not going into the woods any more than it's currently there. We're kind of on the edge of the woods. But what we will do is build a 10 foot high sound barrier. That by half sound barrier will consist of um, wood planks, um, 12 inch planks that are, so they'll, they'll drive um, I, uh, metal I-beams into the ground. The planks will slide in between them and they will act as a buffer both noise and for light. In addition to that, one of the, as part of the discussion we had with the planning board, the initial design was strictly the, the fence and it was and it was straight. Um, and the discussion with the planning board, they made the recommendation that perhaps we would put some additional plantings in the front there in order to absorb more sound so we wouldn't get a potential echo effect. Um, and in addition, we also put some angles in it again to try and diffuse the sound you know, hitting it and again, trying to not have an echo effect in that in the direction of the homes on uh, Wellfleet Drive. So um, I think that finishes up my my discussion. As part of our cover letter, we outlined the this criteria for the special permit. 
It uses in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the bylaw. It's an existing salt shed and it's allowed by special permit. It's an existing salt yard. You know, we made every effort we could in order to make it um, as un unobtrusive as you could possibly make a 35 foot high building. Um, the use that the use is in appropriate location is not detrimental to the neighborhood, does not significantly alter the character of the zoning district. I mean, we talked about that as we went through the, it's an existing salt shed. It is, um, it's going to be a salt shed there and what we're trying to do is improve the situation. Next item is adequate and appropriate facilities will be provided for the proper operation for the proposed use. Um, we discussed that how it will be a better better operation there um, because of the size of it we'll be able to cut down and plan cut down the number of um, trips and then plan better the um, not have unannounced trips or unanticipated trips is a better term next criteria is the proposed use would not be detrimental or offensive to the adjoining zoning district and neighboring properties due to the effects of lighting odor smoke noise, sewage, refuse, visual, or other nuisances. Really the only things here that we're talking about would be lighting and um, noise, I think. So again, we've addressed that by the, by the barrier and the vegetation in front of the barrier. The proposed use would not cause undue traffic congestion in the immediate area, and we don't think there'll be any impact on traffic, any measurable impact on traffic due to it. It will be an improvement in the number, as we talked about, the number of trips. Um, that a proper site plan has been filed for approval with the planning board, and a proper number of copies have been submitted. We, we have been filed. We filed with the planning board and, and this board, of course. And finally, that the use or purpose is consistent with the 1992 master plan and is most recently updated and is, and is I assume the 1992 master plan shows this area as the DPW garage and it will continue to be the, be the DPW garage and this is a, a use that is normal to a DPW garage. So I think that um, that will finish my conversation if we Good. have any questions or any operational questions that me or Blair can answer. Sure, Bill, I had a couple of questions just for clarification on the, um, you, you went to the planning board, I think it was maybe their recommendation and something that's been adopted is that the barrier to the rear of the property, the, the, the 10 foot high barrier, was there a length to that that was required? I was just curious. Yes, it's, it's about, um, it is, I think it's right there. I think it's 144 feet long. Okay. Yeah, that's 144 feet long. Okay, and then my, my other question, just for own, uh, clarification, there's no new lighting proposed? There'll be, there's one light, there'll be one light over the entrance to it. Over the entrance. And it will be, a, okay. be an LED light that's a box light that goes down. It won't be a, it's not a floodlight or anything like that. Okay, so that wouldn't that wouldn't impact any into the rear. Okay. Any questions from board members? I, I do have a question. Already so what I read earlier today, there was was that there's some more um, trees being planted other than just by that rear wall that that you guys are putting up. Was that, no, did I read that no, somewhere? That, that's it. That's all we we're proposing is along the wall there. Along this edge back in, um, I think it was, let me look at my notes. When the DPW did an expansion a few years ago, more, actually more than a few years ago, they planted a line of pines along this area here. So what this will do is that wall will pick it up and then go along the edge here. But if the only planting is in front of that wall. Maybe that maybe that's how I, I, what was there, and then this is an addition. That may have been what I, what I remember reading. So thanks okay. for clarifying. Any other questions from the board before we open it up to the public? Is there anybody in the audience or on Zoom that would like to have a question or comment? This would be a wonderful time. I just have one question. Um, Go right ahead. With the increase in the size of the building, you, you've uh, accommodated the, the waste, the, the water runoff from that building, and you yes. put those trenches in to yeah. to prevent any of the salt running off. Right? Is that? Is that 
Is that the intent? Well, it's the, the those trenches. The reason for the, the trenches on this side of the building is to capture the runoff from the um, building itself. Because there's no gutters on that building, that's how we did it with trenches. We don't anticipate any salts coming off of it because it's undercover. Okay. I mean, there's definitely going to be some down, you know, when they're loading it, but they have to keep it, keep it swept up. And then also when it runs down, because it flows down toward that um, rain garden that I showed you initially, again, we have that, we have the stone trench along the edge of the pavement and it overflows from that and it runs on, I think it's 25 feet of grass and then it will go into the um, rain garden and, and everything down there is salt tolerant and um, oil and grease tolerant. My only other comment, is there is there an oily water trap there in case there's a, uh, a leak from a truck or is that just going into the wastewater? There is no, there's no oil water separators here. Okay. Any other questions? Anybody else on Zoom or in the audience? I see. Don't see any hands. No hands? Okay. Yeah. So, thank you very much. I think if we want to get a motion to close the hearing. Yes. Um, I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? To close aye. the public hearing? Say aye. 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 Thank you, Bill. So in terms of uh, your next steps to deliberate, if you want to. Yep. I think they did get the budget just as for updating the budget. It was approved for the project, the town meeting on the 9th. Um, they're not going to be going to construction until the spring. They're going to go through the season with salt. And then, uh, so in terms of drafting and putting the decision together, I can put it together for you for the December meeting, and then you can just deliberate and discuss it then. So okay. it's not necessarily time sensitive. But okay. But that would probably be our timeline. That we'll, we'll, um, we'll probably deliberate at our next meeting, unless the board thinks otherwise. We can do it tonight, too, and, um, you know, vote on it then. So it would either be tonight or at our next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. 725. So you have uh, the first public hearing for 84. Oh, yeah. 84 Seacon Street. Just a little bit late. Not too bad. Do but, okay. uh, so you do need to read a notice into the record. All right. This is the first public hearing. Notice of public hearing. Notice is hereby given in accordance with Chapter 40A of the Massachusetts General Laws and any and all amendments thereto that a public hearing will be held by the Zoning Board of Appeals in Room 124 at the North Fork Municipal Building on Wednesday, November 17, 2021 for the following application. Peter C. Diamond at 10 p.m. for a special permit pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40A Section 9 and Norfolk Zoning Bylaws D.2C.10 to allow a small scale ground mounted solar voltaic system. The property is located at 84 Seekonk Street, assesses map 22, block 76, lot 11 in the R2 Zoning District. So, jo so joining you via Zoom, the applicants. Very good. Peter Diamonds. Welcome. Thank you. I'm going to get my video on here. here he Hi, everybody. Good I'm evening. Peter Diamond. Good evening. So I come in front of you tonight uh, looking for a special permit to install a small scale ground mounted solar both photovoltaic array on my property at 84 Seekonk Street. Uh, system size is approximately uh, 12,000 watts DC and it will comprise of about 30 solar modules at 400 watts each and connected together they'll make the 12,000 watts and that will be converted to AC and back feed to my electric system in my home. And um, 
approximate area for the solar ground mounted array is an area about 20 by 50 feet on the north side of my property with the solar ground mounted array facing south for the best solar exposure. Now I've elected to do a ground mount solar array for a few reasons. Uh, the main reason is my roof on my home has multiple dormers and is um, my home is located on the south side of my property closer to a line of trees that blocks the sun. Uh, so it was, wasn't really a good spot to put solar on my roof. And the one part of my property, my one acre lot on the north side has a good location facing south to put a ground mounted array. And according to zoning bylaw, uh, D2, section D2, C10, and accessory to a uh, residential structure requires a special permit, permit. So I'm here in front of you people. Okay. And if you have any questions, I'll make my best effort to answer them. Very good. Um, I'll open it up to the board. Any questions? Mr. Diamond? Uh, yeah, I, this is Chris Maycap. I have one question. Um, you, you've shown your plot plan here. Um, do you have a neighbor on the south side there? Is is that something they may to be need to be made aware of? Um, all the neighbors were notified within 300 feet. Uh, pro proper notification was given through the, um, the board. Um, the south side is um, old Campbell Road. So between my property, I'm a corner lot on Seacock Street and Old Campbell Road. So the south side, there's a home across, uh, I think it's number 82 or number 80. And they were notified. Um, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, it does. My only other question is you know, to provide a good solar uh, view. Have you had to, are there trees that have to be removed or have you, is it clear that that one acre is a clear land? Well, if you look at my plot plan, so there are some trees and that would be um, on the west end of that solar array on the shed end where, where the plot plan says lot one on that end, there's a few trees that I may take down that would give me more early morning sun, number one. And number two, there's a couple of large pine trees. If the wind were to catch them and some of these storms would have recently, that would, um, the tree would land right on my array. So there's a couple of trees back there we're gonna remove. Last question is basically, is there any um, additions to the utility, the electrical cabling, or are you using existing uh, connection to interface uh, with the utility? Uh, it will be the existing connection to my home. They'll put in a bi-directional meter uh, through the SMART program with Eversource, uh, but there'll be no additional um, utility drops to my home for this. This is a residential system and it will work through my home. That's good. Thank you for answering the questions. That's good. So uh, there's a picture up there now that shows approximately where the solar ground mount array would be. And you can see some of the trees on that right side that are rather large. I'll probably be taking those down. And this ground, it will be inclined towards the sun, right? Yes, which would be towards the driveway or the vehicles. Um, the low end will be approximately 24 to uh, 30 inches off the ground. And the north side, uh, we're looking at 8 to 10 feet, depending on the uh, 
the angle of the pitch to get the best solar exposure. There is a, so Mr. Diamond did provide a picture of one that was similarly put in on Park Street, if you wanted to see it. It's on that shared drive, in the shared drive folder or not? Uh, yeah, it is, yeah, yes. No, but in terms of, we could display it for the public. That's where I looked to, to for those of you want to go back and look. And while the, the location is located in the, in the front of the property, um, it does meet the setback of 50 feet in the side yard of 25, it looks like. Yeah. Yes, sir. Any other questions from the board? I have a question about this Park Street one. Did this array require a special permit as well? It did require a special permit. The only difference when that was permitted was through the planning board. Now that permit's through the Zoning Board of Appeals. Yeah, I, think in, I think the zoning bylaws, every every area, every zone area requ requires a special permit for that. I got it. It does require a special permit. The only difference is your, this body is the permit grant authority versus the planning board did that one. How are you doing, Peter? Um, Good. How are you? Good. Uh, I'm. You have kind of like a long driveway. Is that uh, that garage that's uh, pictured uh, at the end? Is it, is it at the end of that driveway to the left of the house? Yes, it is. That's okay. a shed. And what we're seeing over here, like uh, the. Oh. The size uh, that you're proposing would it be similar to the size that we see here on Oop. Park Street? I don't know if you can see that. Uh, but like, what, what would the size of it be? It'd be similar to the one on Park Street. Um, I don't think it would stand as tall as the one on Park Street. The one on Park Street is set on a three post structure. Uh, I think the front, the front edge of his is almost six feet off the ground. And I think the rear was pretty tall, almost 15 feet. So um, so I think it would be, um, even though you're going to intending on cutting some trees, it would still be not that highly visible to the street because you're kind of in a little bit. So. Tucked in, correct. It will still be seen from the street, though. Now, is it, this is the two-family, is this the two-family house you're talking yes. about? Yes. So would it provide power to both sides? Well, the, it only be connected to my house. They only permit connection to to um, one, but they do have something called Schedule Z, where if I make in excess of the electric um, electricity that I use, I can divert some of that, we'll say, in the bank type of electricity to another property, which could be some of the other pro, um, meters there, or I could even, my father lives on Main Street and I could divert some of the excess um, power to my father. But the design of my system is about 80 to 100% of my consumption. So I don't really see that I'll have to, or will have the opportunity to share the excess with anybody else. Uh, my memory serves correct. Are you an electrician? Are you an I electrician? am. You are an electrician. Okay, I remember now. And, uh, and, and I'm just curious, uh, this is probably an efficient system if you're selecting it. And I think that your, I was also wondering, your garage also has electricity, correct? A shed, yes. Shed. So you'll be hooking up uh, the shed too? No. No? Okay. No. I, um, I'll, I'll be going to one particular, actually, Yes, indirectly it does uh, supply power to to that building too, that structure. But it won't won't be connected to it. Um, actually, there'll be a trench, oh, about a hundred and eighty feet long, just to get it to the, to the electrical hookup that I will desire to connect it to my house. I did some research on this too. We were considering it. Usually companies come here and they apply for permits. Are you doing this through a company or Sunrun or you're just um, doing this on your own? I'm doing, it, I'm doing all the AC wiring myself okay. and I'm working with a installer for the PV solar photovoltaic array installation. Peter, 
Do you have any idea how how high the, the panels off will be off the ground? Uh, like I said earlier, the front edge is proposed to be uh, 24 to 30 inches off the ground in the back from 8 to 10 feet. And I did submit a couple of um, depictions of what that would be. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's part of your package. Yeah. And I also um, propose to wrap the installation in vinyl lattice of dark green color. We're just trying to pull up those photos that you sent in. Oh, you want to see that? I'm sorry. Oh, if you, is, that, is that what you're trying to do? No, I was going to. Okay. I was going to get the plan with the specification on the okay. dimension on the right, or you want to see? Whatever you had. <clears throat> While they're doing that, are there any other questions from the board? Is there anybody from the public that has any questions? Peter, is that the that's the area that you had marked off on in your yard, correct? With this caution tape? Yes, it is. Yeah. I, I tried to put that um, tape up so anybody who had noticed in my neighborhood could see what I was proposing. I saw it. Okay. So it's in your front yard or side yard. Correct. <laughs> side front yard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I think anybody who drives down Seekonk Street from time it's installed to whenever it's removed is going to see it it's it's right there sure so but i think it's i think it's a the way of the future i think everybody's going to see him everywhere so yeah. too bad you couldn't make a carport out of it you, know, you got you got your shed you could put a carport right in front be good. that would have added a significant cost to it oh, all right didn't want to um, take on. But the, but, the, um, but the end result would be for the down the driveway uh, beside yeah, his chest. Probably true, yeah. yeah, so it's not, I mean, it's no, not, it's not bad. It looks, no, it's not that it'll bad. It'll be fine. It looks yeah. like you had it out closer to the street at one time and then you moved it back a little further. Is that correct? The tape? Did you, uh, move, did you move it? I, I go by it every single day, so that's why I see it. So. <laughs> uh, I. I it looked like you, have, you're rearranging it or something. I may have. I, I did some measuring um, according to the plan that was given to me by my civil engineer. Yep. I haven't hired him to come out and stake the exact location until I have approval from you. But that's approximately where the location will be. Any other questions from the board or from the public or anybody on Zoom? Apparently not. Can we get a motion to close this hearing? I'll entertain that. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Welcome. I make a motion to close the hearing on 84 Seacon Street Solar Voltaic Arrays. I second. Any I second discussion? Me. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Peter. Go ahead, Rich. Have a good evening. It's late to the party, sorry. That's Somebody okay. want to pass that one to uh, Courtney. So. Oh. So Tyler could have the first one and then she could have Sure. Oh, one. he just said I. I'm good. <laughs> All right. We'll get you next no time. No one needs to know my feelings on that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care of that next time. Sorry about that ahead of time. Um, I'm not worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> we're, bl we're blessed with extra. Extra yeah, body, we're so we're not like used to it. Right. <laughs> it's a luxury. It is a luxury. You, you can just keep on voting. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep on not voting. That's a good place to be. All right. Very, very good. <laughs> All right. So in terms of the next item on the agenda, um, we have at 7:15. We we did have Village Green, but I did 
forward correspondence earlier in terms of the, the, the trail was installed, photographs have been taken to verify it, and the uh, occupancy permits were issued for that project, right. so there's really no action needed for the board. So the development met a tight timeline and was able to get the work done. Correct. Yep. So we're, Great. there's nothing for the board to discuss regarding that matter. Um, then we just shift down to uh, the next one, which is uh, Boyd's Crossing. A, the first item on the list was, if you recall, they originally submitted a request to do an insubstantial change to swap out the precast uh, concrete that was on the approved plan for the extruded concrete. Um, as you know, they decided to uh, install the precast concrete per the plan, mm -hmm. and the plan, the concrete is, uh, it's pretty, what is it, 99%, 98%, I guess? Yeah. Owen Kelly from uh, Powerhead, oh, yeah, 99% complete right now. Great. Yeah, I drove through the other day. It looked good. Good. And then in terms of, um, then the second request was the insubstantial change to the lighting plan. Um, they're actually withdrawing that request and going with the approved lighting plan that was originally part of the comprehensive permit. But I do have... Um, One, so the, in terms of the lighting plan that was approved, there was one referenced in the decision, which we have been conversing back and forth with Owen, Kelly, and Bisher regarding, um, and then there was a final plan that was part of the approval packet. I didn't have that particular plan, um, but I do believe what they've communicated to us was the final approved plan, which has a 2016 date on it. Mm -hmm. If you want to go in to see, but yeah, Boys Crossing. Hopefully, I copied it over there. Is that a lighting plan? Yeah. No, that's not it. Darn it. Mm hmm. All right, that's not going to help me. Uh, all right. Let me see how I can work around this at the moment. Um, so they did email me a plan which has a 2016 date on it, and um, they want to go with the approved plan that was part of the original. Which is the 2016. We'll call them the yeah, 2016. 2016 plan, not to make changes to it. Um, so let me see if I can try this thing. Sorry. So um, we just want to be certain, have a little bit of confidence in that 2016 plan was the plan that was approved. Is that, is that the yeah, and that's what, yeah. that's what Rich is confirming. Yeah. Yeah, so what what I think makes sense in terms of process, so for tonight, that we're drawing the request. So that will be off the table. Yep. And then what I'll do is I, I've been working with them to try to verify. What they want to do with the approved plan is I can report back to you sure. at the December meeting in terms of that plan. Okay. Um, so that's how I would handle it so you can see that. Um, to verify that. But you gentlemen are confident that's that's the correct plan. Correct. But either way, we're going to do it with the proof, so we'll work it out with Rich. Very good. Okay. Um, and so that's, that's really it um, in terms of that, those two items. So in, what I would ask the board is just to accept their, their request for withdrawal for those two insubstantial changes, which, which was the precast concrete. Sure. And then the uh, the lighting change. Do we have a, a motion to accept the withdrawal from the minor modification application? Um, I make a motion to accept the withdrawal. A second. Hey, second to any discussion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 So, on. so in sliding down to uh, another request, but for the same project. As you know, because of the, the change in the precast concrete, they're busy doing the construction, so they're, they're not able to finish the project and uh, prepare a final as-built plan, which was the final occupancy permit for the project. It was contingent upon that final as-built plan. What they would like to do is um, you know, the Board of Appeals would retain, at this point, the bond, the surety that's held, um, they'll finish the work that needs to be done 
um, but the exchange would be that the, the zoning board would release that final occupancy permit. This is the final and last one for the project. Um, so that's, that's their second request for the project. Um, and we think the only work to be complete is the, the very de minimis installation of the curbing that's not quite complete and the lighting. The so, so, yes. so we have the final pavement to do yeah. um, and the repair of the sidewalk all the curbing is done and then the lighting that's it and then the final piece of it in terms of the um, the as-built plan they'll locate all the structures get the dimensions to them to the property line to to verify that they meet the setback from the permit make sure those match up if everything is good in terms of the structure setback mm -hmm. for the permit then it'll be it'll be done if it's if it's not then uh they'll have to request a well, you guys have a lot of money if ours so yeah so <laughs> there's there's surety there but in terms of yep. so what not totally related to this but somewhat in the la larger picture what we're doing with them and since they're here I might as well just say it now because yep. they're going to be doing lakeland hills is going forward we'll have them do an interim as built with a foundation so we have you know we'll have a location where the foundation is at that point so then we know where the foundations are in terms of setbacks to hopefully then we don't have any more issues with yeah i know it wasn't required but did you did you do an interim as built on the foundations yeah each of the individual units all have gotten foundation as built the only thing left is you want we we're going to add the porches and things like that which since the foundations haven't moved, won't be a problem. And there's no there's no issues with the foundation location. No. I'll open it up to the board. Any questions? They're closing. So that's it was our intention to have everything complete before then, and then we swapped out all the curbing, so we're getting a little delay. So right. it's mostly a courtesy for a new homeowner. So Correct. Any other questions from the board? Anybody from the public or on Zoom has any questions or comments? Please identify yourself and go right ahead. Welcome. Just, just I just need you to clear. Could I, uh, Susan Asensio, 64 Boyd's clarification of the final pavement is also the Cape Cod berms that are going in. That happens at that point. Okay, I just need you to know that. Thank you. Anybody else from the public or on Zoom that has a question or concern? All right. I'd entertain a motion um, from the board to approve the request for the minor modification of the board's crossing to allow release of the final occupant to allow release of the final occupancy permit prior to the as built so the uh, well Chris or David I mean suppose I don't know. well there's three you only need three so right. Do we have a motion should we should we say something in the motion that the bonds not being released until then or something oh, I'm not I'm not we can I mean I I just yes I think I think you might want to say sure. something like that just because that's the reason that, why we're doing one versus the other. It's the, right. the hand swap. So, yep. okay. so you want to formulate the motion? Sure. That sounds great. <laughs> um, request for minor board modification of Boyd's Crossing to allow the final occupancy permit to uh, prior to an as-built plan in and holding the bond until everything is complete. And the as-built plan is filed and the as built no we're not and the as built plan is filed before the bond is released but the house per, can be permitted the as built is being filed with our it's a building. building and I think it goes both ways and DPW as well is there a second, second. Mm -hmm. any discussion all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. 
Did we make a motion on the bus stop from the previous meeting? I don't know. We kind of did that at the walk around. I don't well, know if that sure was. I don't had, know if that was. It was only you and I at the walk there. Yeah, I know. So we couldn't have voted. I thought we. I thought we approved the th bus thing and we held off on the concrete and the lighting, um, but we had approved just a bench. But then we looked at where it was going to be the day we walked around. Okay. That, that was my understanding. Yeah. Okay. Let me look at the. We we can verify that for the next yeah. meeting. Just looking through the minutes, let's see. You did the walk afterwards, it wasn't in We there, did do the walk after, yeah. But I thought the so night before we had done that. That's all right. Let's see. If they didn't catch it in the notes, then it didn't. Get was done. A, well, didn't you send an e There was an email that there had was that an email. In it. Yeah. yeah, but I don't think the board, I think I don't think it made it. We'll put it on for the meeting in December just okay. to clean up in terms of taking yeah. a vote. So I don't, I don't think we specifically voted that. No, I don't recall that. I know we talked about we it, talk, we but, talked. but I think we kind of sidestepped it to take the walk around. So. Right. Is that bus shelter required in another condition? It was yeah, part it was of, part of the It was part of the comprehensive permit. When does that condition need to be modified to to release the final CO? Would we need to go back on the last vote and add that? Is that possible? There wasn't a vote. Oh, wait, we're still doing the motion, you're right. right. Yeah. Sorry, I'm skipping ahead. That's okay. Sorry. But no, it was a good point. <laughs> point taken. You might want to grab that one while we're at it if we can, so they, people can close. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a good catch. Thank you. I would just uh, add that. Reference that condition to see if I'm sure it's a, got another number to it. Yeah, I would make a, you can make a separate motion if you want, or... Uh, we can combine it to one new motion. Can we make a new motion? I think it might. I think it'd be simpler to create a new motion, right? Just referencing that because yeah, I would think so. I can just stab at it. I'll take a stab at a motion. I make a motion to accept the request for a minor modification to Boyd's Crossings um, bus shelter to be eliminated and install a bench uh, similar to the ones on the, the common up on town um, for anybody and all general public to be able to use whenever need be instead of it just being a bus shelter. Is there a second? Second, okay. Very cool. <laughs> 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 two are being real quiet. Any fine. discussion? All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Having not heard the case uh, <laughs> to begin with, I'm going to go ahead and not <laughs> abstain. <laughs> yeah. In this case, Tyler, because we have yeah. three, we have three full members, and that's all you need for the comprehensive permit. Perfect. So we don't. It makes common sense to me, so I don't, yeah, I don't know what yeah. that counts for. It. No, it yeah. does. So the special permit <laughs> needs an associate. They need four of them voting, but the uh, but the top permits are different. Right. So. All right. So thank you. That was a good catch. Uh, take care of that. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Yeah, they'll be the most grateful, right? Uh, are they calling you yet? <laughs> huh? Are they calling you yet? Uh, no. Oh, no. well, they're not super anxious then. Good on you. <laughs> yeah. If they didn't get it, if it wasn't coming, they'd be getting called, right? Sure. So, um, <laughs> so we'll shift gears over to different development, similar developers, uh, different LLC, the village in Norfolk, which um, they are getting ready to... Uh, to close on one of the units 
And one of the conditions of the permit was to have the fencing to be installed between the units before occupancy permit under G1A, as well as the common gazebo. And if you, uh, you know, if you go to the site and take a look at it, um, there's still quite a bit of construction going on. And I think in terms of, you know, matching construction up with, you know, occupying the homes, it doesn't make logical sense to, uh, well, first, number one, the fence. To put a fence in before you do a landscaping. You could put a fence in and then rip it out or redo it, kind of. Um, I think this is along those lines where some of the conditions in the comp permit don't necessarily match up as you execute the construction of the project. Mm -hmm. um, I understand the intention of it, you know. And the intention is, uh, so it kind of looks like a neighborhood before everybody's living there. That's, I, I, that's the intention. Right? That is the intention. Um, and, and it makes... It does make sense overall. Um, however, um, I think if you look at the request in their email, I think you had said you wanted to put the, go to, uh, is, this the, oh, is this the one you said, the date? Uh, so yeah, the request was to set a hard date in June, June 1st to have those items in place. So it's both the gazebo and the fencing in between the units. Um, as Rich said, the request was, we're getting, we're getting into winter time. Um, so I'm not gonna be able to do plantings now. Um, and so if I put the fencing in, um, I'm gonna have to move it to put the landscaping in and then put the fencing back. Um, so I left two um, caveats to my request that I thought would meet the town's uh, concerns. The first was to put a hard date that says, hey, we're not kicking the can down the road. As soon as the spring comes around, we need to get going on this kind of stuff. Um, the other piece of the gazebo is because we're still putting in foundations, um, I'd have trucks running into it as soon as it was up right now. Um, but by that time, by the springtime, we'll have that area more stabilized. Um, the second thing is I, I left a caveat for the building inspector to be able to deem a fence uh, necessary by safety. Um, so if there's any fences, I think that was the original intention was to have um, safe control, like safe areas on the side of the houses. So if he deems a particular spot not unsafe, um, then we can put that fence in. During construction, right? The completion of construction. Correct. But you could do that anyway. Yeah. But you could do that anyway. You would take the fence to approve that. Do what? You said, if I understood, you, I think you indicated that you, the caveat for the building is better to, re, to require the, the fence. Right. So I could put the fence in um, as soon as I. But if he says, if I say, hey, I don't think I want to put this in yet, and he says, nope, it's a safety concern, he can override and say, uh, right. put the fence in, even if you have to take it out in the springtime and put it back. Yeah, if the fence is needed because of two, three, that makes sense to me. Any questions from the board? So the the board that was in place that accepted the comprehensive permit mm -hmm. for the whole thing, mm -hmm. they had these two requirements in there, correct? Mm -hmm. What was their reasoning to have the gazebo before the first occupancy permit? Did they have discussion you about it? The conditions on this. Did you have a causing salt? Like uh, I think. Town council? Town council. No, I had special council, I think. This was special counsel, so it all predates me. So it, it predates me too. So. They're not usually construction experts who are writing the conditions, and so it sounds good to say, "Hey, we want." Ian, do you remember why they wanted the gazebo before the occupants? You I mean, usually can, throw everything like normally you put in like binder in. or something like that, but right, I, I, all the things were leaving. Gazebo, I wouldn't necessarily think would be a, but they it must have had a reason for it. Uh, 
Winter makes it hard, <laughs> you know, because you don't know when they're actually going to pull the permits to start, and you know, it just happens sometimes. But yeah. just putting a gazebo in before, I mean, it, it just doesn't make sense. It uh, doesn't. I mean, it, 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 I mean, I mean it probably it's, it probably made sense when they were drafting, but when you really step back, yeah. it doesn't. The only reason I could think is that it's one of the more like superfluous items that tend to at the end. happens and so the only reason that you do it beforehand is to avoid that if you are really hardcore about it but there is something to be said about when people are living there to <laughs> yeah okay they're the ones who are on it you know inheriting it but i thought it, i thought it, i thought it was interesting that in some of the um reading through the 40b project stuff some of the the open space things that they they accept or think are good. One of them is a farmer's market, so I'm putting in my two cents. That would be a good idea somewhere in the future. You know, that close to the center of town. Just <laughs> <laughs> right. throwing in my two cents. <laughs> is there anybody else in the public or on Zoom that has a question or comment on this? Any other board members have any other questions on this? And I just wanted to let you know in terms of just a couple of things related to getting the occupancy permit um, I did send the condo trust to Oxford town council they got to work on those um, which they can now to get that those squared away before the occupancy permit could be issued um, I did send a request to the con beta group who did the construction oversight just to confirm what I already know the infrastructure is in but I'll get that as well from them just to confirm that for the record and then um, I mean, I think th there is still more work to be done before the, re the home is ready for occupancy anyway. We know there's Just a lot of utilities in the road because we had to move one of the garages it's, it's true. to the property yeah. line. So. Yeah, you do. Point taken. <laughs> <is> spaghetti <laughs> under there. Yeah. <laughs> so, but so they still have more work to do. The point is to, to complete out this condition. But these are the, the bigger lifts in terms of the two things that, you know, again, probably don't make sense. So is this request for one occupancy permit or multiple? It opens the process, right? It opens those two for the process. That's why I put the piece about the safety in there. Um, so that way the building inspector they can, can make they can that. pretty much start issuing occupancy permits from this day forward until the Yeah, last there is a ones. hard cap yeah. in terms of there will be. There is that 16 units. I think there's a bunch of new triggers and stuff like Correct. that. Correct. There is another trigger at 16 we'll, units. We'll, we won't be there by June 1st, though. So. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion? Sure. I make a motion that uh, the request for minor modification to the village of Norfolk to allow the issuance of an occupancy permit prior to the conditions of common gazebo being constructed and the installation of fence adjacent to the unit receives an occupancy permit. It would be one with those. Yes, exactly. And adopting the conditions that are provided uh, in a letter to Rich about June 1st, 2022. Is there a second? No, second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So in terms of uh, the next order of business, we want to take out of order, per se, is to, well, actually, is... Uh, She's still here. Here she is. Okay. Okay. All right. For two is time. Good. So, <laughs> um, want to do is deliberate on ten old populatic. Very good. Yeah. All right. So welcome. 
back. We're gonna we're gonna deliberate on the uh, ten old populatic. This goes back a little bit. <laughs> you should take a ride. You gotta take. You gotta take a ride. Okay. Can I have I, a draft? I, I shake my head. Sit down there, Courtney. Enough. Yeah, you do. You should. You, you gotta take a ride. The draft in front of you, I think. It's a good evening activity. I've got the truck tonight. Oh, it's Look in your it's, eyes says I need the truck. You, 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 you should, <laughs> you should take the truck. It's just a lot, it just makes it a lot more interesting to turn around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the lost in powers in there? Yeah, there's a, <laughs> there's a stop sign on someone's house halfway down the road. <laughs> there is. It's, 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 it's well, quite an interesting right, drive. I, I don't know All right, so going back to 10 Old Populatic Road. Um, I drove out of there thinking... Why, why would anybody go to Maine? You can go right here in Norfolk. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they do have sewers and they have water. You they know, do. They, 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 I've better than most of Norfolk. It's even, uh, yeah, but it was even better than Maine. Well, so. they have the little <laughs> water. From Millis. Okay. Okay. Uh, not from Millis, from, from uh, Franklin. 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 Ties into Franklin. Oh, yeah. oh right, so the gentlemen. DP coming on that? They're right on a pond. That had to be gross. Right, so we have case number 2021-1110 Old Populatic Road, Norfolk, and back a couple of months ago to refresh everyone's memory. Uh, the applicant submitted an application for a special permit. The comments here were, were, were addressing uh, primarily one of the issues, that, the main issue there was the, the, the road, the, the narrowness, that's an understatement. Um, but I, but I, I think most of us or some of us have been down there. It's a residential area. Setbacks are tight, but the, the applicant, I believe, met the criteria for a special permit. And that what he's going to do is demolish the existing structure, uh, which has more, no, which has no more useful life, and construct a new structure that will meet the current state building code and make it safer to live in. The new structure will be within the old footprint and squaring off the left corner of the house. The use is an appropriate location. It's not not detrimental to the neighborhood, even though it's a tight area down there. It's, it's no more detrimental. Um, it's, it's in a residential zone, so it's not changing the use there. The new home will connect to sewer and water from the town of Franklin. That's a nice feature. Um, Very nice feature. There'll be no additional undue traffic. And any traffic down there is a lot because it can't handle much. But I think there's only one or two homes at the end of the road. <laughs> I think there's I think there's one home after it. Is it one yeah. or two? And uh, there's there's one, but there's a, a vacant there lot. There is a behind, vacant lot yeah. there, right. but there is there is yeah. only one home. Yeah. Uh, and that home is huge, or it looks huge from where it is anyway. Pretty yeah. Yeah, this is definitely oh. uh, seeing is believing when you. Yeah. I think one, one thing might might. I don't know how they do the snow plowing on that road. Right, so they wait for the melt, I guess. The, they all have kids and they make them shovel. They must be. Because he was going to have the garage on the other side of this Correct. roadway, I believe, then he was going to use that area as a lay down area for construction. For like, the, yeah, for all the construction equipment and everything was going to be on the opposite side where the garage was going to be. Right, yeah, it was going to level that out. Excavate into bit. the hill. Yeah. Clear the, you know, clear the. And, and this is all, this is all passed through conservation and everything. Everything's. Okay, so he he had previously gone before the conservation commission and gotten the approval. I will say I think he may need to make it a, a, a amendment to his his order conditions because it was it was literally right on the same footprint before. So he should he is shifting it. It's further away from the pond, but in terms of its actual location, it, it is shifting. Okay, so he might have to go back. So we have a draft of proposed conditions if we're so inclined and um, talking about that condition number one. Construction staging areas shall be utilized for all materials and equipment in order to keep old populated road open for passage. Newly creating staging areas shall be stabilized to prevent erosion and a washout of the slope located to the rear of the property. Um, efforts shall be utilized to prevent construction litter and dust leaving the property. 
two, the proposed condition would be that during construction, all vehicles shall be parked to provide open access to the end of Old Populatic Road and back to the beginning of all and back to the beginning for all vehicle types, most importantly, all public safety vehicles. Three would be construction barriers shall be provided around the site excavation to protect the pedestrian from the pedestrians from inadvertently falling into an open excavation for the house and two-car garage. After installation of the barriers, the land use department shall be contacted to conduct a site visit to see if the barriers are adequate. Other town departments may be consulted with by the land use department as to the adequacy of the barriers. Hopefully they all have to go down there at once. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. In addition, construction barriers shall be If they be do, they all take a minivan. <laughs> on the old road to prevent the vehicle from inadvertently driving into the excavation hole for the house and two-car garage. After installation of the barriers, the land use department shall be contacted to conduct a site visit to see if the barriers are adequate. Other town departments may be consulted as needed. Any construction debris or related refuse will be removed from the property within 30 days of occupancy. Seven talks about the light. Exterior lighting shall be installed to not create undue glare to surrounding properties. When complaints are received, exterior lighting shall be adjusted to reduce glare to adjacent properties. Eight. Okay. Appeals. Um, one thing I we may want to add as a condition, if we vote favorably on this, is um, as a courtesy or as a safety and a courtesy is because of the unique situation there of the, of the road is to have the applicant give notice of when the work will commence somehow um, to both the town and the, the neighbor at the end so that. I'm, I'm concerned about safety. If the work is starting, I want to make sure that fire and safety is on board, that they realize that there's work going on down there. They may, especially when it first commences, that they, it gives them a heads up to maybe take a look at it to make sure that they can get by. Um, and also just as a courtesy to the, the other residents at the end of the property so that we know that they're comfortable with the egress. Um, I think we're going to notice maybe 24 or 48 hours prior to commencement of the work would be appropriate. Okay. I'll just say, we'll have to yeah. pause a moment, sorry, because yeah. you lost your fourth member there for a moment. So. Okay. The point is taken, though. Can, can I ask a question about one of the already written conditions, or do sure. we still need to wait? No, that's fine. You can ask a question. So the, with the construction barriers, again, in the, the vein of safety for people and vehicles does, does it need to specify like to what type of construction barrier are we just talking about the chain link the temporary chain link fencing or a piece of caution tape you know something that obviously keeps everyone safe but something that's maybe not too, too I think elaborate it, to you know at you the can't, expense it can't of the, be bulky yeah, yeah. <laughs> it can't be bulky so, so it's got to be it's that's, gotta that's be. what i say is it like a you know right a wooden fence, or is it just the, the temporary chain link, or is it just stakes with caution tape? Like, what are what are the? Um, to be honest with you, I probably would almost prefer a pretty close to a Jersey barrier. Yeah, I was, me too. I was gonna say a concrete barrier. No, yeah. um, because if this is the challenge about this particular property, because there is no, there, the way they're this project originally the way it was being approached was going to be a partial demo and then a reconstruction they weren't completely they weren't yeah. con so the over excavation needed to do the foundation was wasn't as extensive as this is going to be so it was a much different project then now um, I don't know we're going to see it might have to be Jersey barriers because yeah, yeah, well, I, I mean honestly the, if I remember correctly the property if you're if you're looking at the pond from the drive, looking at the, the actual house that's there, the property that's to the left of it is like right there. It's right close. Right, it's yeah, right there. Right and then, close. but the, then the, there's a lot of land going the other way before you get to the other house. Yeah, yeah there's like at the very end. Lot. There's like an open lot in between. And there actually isn't a physical layout property line to Old Populatic there. It's a, right, you know, yeah, right away through there. Mike, the reason for asking is because I don't, certainly don't want to make it any more difficult on anything. Anything, right? Do I, right? But it, if 
if he puts up caution tape between stakes and then the inspection happens and they're like, oh no, this barrier is no good, then that's just going to create more frustration for him as the, you know, yeah, I think I think component. we could maybe on that point maybe what I would suggest we could add we could add a pre-construction meeting with him, myself, and the billing department to just go over exactly what he's going to do okay. for that on the start, so that he doesn't get into. I suspect there are some construction safety standards when you're putting a hole next to it. Right. Yeah, and our sure. <laughs> well. <laughs> Seems reasonable to those, those standards, I mean, honestly, some of those standards, that might be overkill for where, where we're talking in reality. So they, they, I think a pre-construction makes a whole lot of sense to kind of divert possibly some of that because you know, it's, I like that. it is so yeah. tight. There, I don't know how they're... You may I want mean, to invite the neighbors it, to that I can't even well. visually see how much room they're going to gain on the other side of the... The, what is the right of way right now? Well, and if they have to because go to that's where they're too. supposed to keep all the construction right now. There's, I mean, barely a turnaround for. I mean, I, I drove my truck and I've got the longest truck you can have, pretty much. And it, yeah, and I think, I think so. It, it took a little bit to maybe turn it. More than just the neighbor in the back, <laughs> all, all, you know, the, the the residents of the street, you know, yeah, just so sure. they know what's yeah. going on. That so, so if there, he, anywhere if they he, store materials, though, is also going to be in jurisdiction for Concom. They're going to have some things. About that as well. Yes, they already have an existing order conditions okay. with them. So, okay. in terms of, um, I think the pre-construction absolutely makes sense to do that because if he, if he excavates a little, it's a right away. So there is no physical layout. But right. on this side, is the garage that's going to be on one side, old poppy like the house is on the other. If he does a good job excavating back into the hill, he can create, you know, space to get around it and keep it clear. So. Yeah. You know, but if it doesn't get excavated enough, that's where it gets even tighter to it. So you're gonna need to blast because this ledge. What's the um? No, I don't no. think it's ledge. It's not okay. ledge. It's just. He, it's just. He, I don't. I'm not. We didn't get into it in our discussion because I don't think it was without George such an earth removal. Um, that may be something that he has to apply for. It's, if it, if it, it's, it's, it's exactly. possible. Yeah, that that's possible. He he might. It's quite we'll a hill. Let's see. The material is good to excavate. It might be more concerned it might collapse onto itself. Yeah. It's not being yeah. that stable. Yeah. Um, what's the, it's what, a dirt road or road? Oh, it's like, a dirt road. Yeah, a dirt like, road. So yep. there's no substrate holding it up? No, no. no. Cool. <laughs> so, oh, it's really a good one. Yeah. No, I think, the I, found, no, I think the foundation of the house is actually stopping the road from yeah, being that's, sunk into that's the That's what I'm getting at is what's holding <laughs> the road I think it's up. the, yeah. It, I mean, it it's, sounds like there's a hill, so. Yeah. I mean, I'd be I'd be, be cool. surprised if you didn't excavate the the foundation and find pond. I mean, it, it's that but the water table's up oh, high too. Oh, no, yes. the pond is right. I mean, literally right, right there. there. Yeah. The, the foundation is almost like a retaining wall oh. to the pond. But I do so. So, so we get back to, that close. Yeah, we could add a couple of conditions. I think. So to get back to the barriers, we're gonna. Is it is it the board's pleasure to you know? Uh, the point was brought up on the on the what the barriers should be. Are we gonna require? Concrete construction barriers. No, I think a, a pre-construction. Yeah, why don't we put it subject to the review and approval of staff with the with building and right. standards and that should cover it. Yeah, and then if it's I think that, it's a that way, if the concrete meeting. barrier doesn't work out, but there's some sort of fancy thing that they can do, there's room for it without having to come back. Personally, having been there, there's no room for a concrete barrier between this foundation. I mean, well, that's what I was saying. If he ex if he, if he ex excavates, he excavates first, back, to excavate the other yeah, side. Yeah, right. and then he can move. The, he right. can almost move the road so that it goes around, and that gives him more. I, I room. think your comment about having a pre-construction meeting might be very useful because it would be very uh, informative to understand what heavy equipment he's going to try and get down that road. Mm -hmm. Because there's no space to move anything down there, no. and he's going to need some pretty big uh, equipment to do that. Excavation. This is. I hope he's got his answer for that. One. Yeah. So yeah. a pre-construction meeting would that be a week, two weeks prior to? Because you know you're lining up equipment. Work. Um, I would say multiple prior, prior, to, prior to a building permit. permit. Yeah, prior yeah, to I was building. Say before yeah. building permit. So they can't yeah. do anything until. I, okay. As I said earlier, there's one real bottleneck on that road where there's a neighbor that's got a garage on one side oh, and yeah. a house on the other, and he's got a stop sign on the end of his garage. Yep. And that's not very wide. To no, he's not. bringing trucks through for construction equipment. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be really tough. 
And is that, that is that a garage? There's one it's that something. was. Is that a garage or a house? I, I honestly tell. thought somebody I was living tell. in there. I couldn't <laughs> tell. I, I just went. Okay. Yeah, I thought somebody so that was, could be a number nine. I went down at yeah. night and there number were lights nine. on. I don't they, think I'd I want to go down was... at night. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> Someone's going to come out with a shotgun. <laughs> you want to... Uh... So question, or I have a question about condition it's, number seven. Go right sure. I uh, use and reconstruction of the non-conforming structure will be for the personal use of the applicant slash owner, Ryan Dulac. I have some concerns about that. I'm sorry, which, which condition do you want? Number seven, so, the so. use of the reconstructed non-conforming structure will be for the personal use of the applicant slash owner. Um, I have some concerns about the enforceability from the, of that. Oh, you're, you're on the findings. Yes. Yeah, oh. oh, that's the fine. Oh, you're right. I'm right under decision. Great. I was just <laughs> like, I was looking at that as a condition. I was like, nobody's. Not that one. Right. That's, that's ours. So just out. like, no, that, that one will get you sued. <laughs> it, it right. was a condition. Yeah, no, yeah. No, yeah, it's not. Uh, yeah. So pre, you had me nervous there. Yeah. 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 Every, every time I see an owner and owner, it's like, oh, avoid, avoid, avoid. <laughs> this is a difficult one. So, has everybody had a chance to, to look at the proposed draft of this decision? What we just outlined and I, I, do, I was just wondering if there were any referrals to, this, uh, to the uh, Conservation Committee because made because of the proximity to the water and all well, that. Well, the conservation, right. co conservation has their own set of things that they have to do, and it's right. all kinds of hoops that they have to jump through for conservation. But so that doesn't the, really... Prior to the issuance of a that, building permit. Correct. So every board that has to weigh in will weigh in. We don't have to circular right. Uh, right. reference it because right. the code already does it. Okay. Yeah. In terms of... So we, you, so here's another option you have. Uh, is like a... You could discuss them. I can draft up some conditions to these two conditions, then bring it back to you. Um, you know, I mean, I know he might. Granted, I know he wants to get going per se for tomorrow, but it's still an open issue in terms of conservation yet, which he hasn't spoken to. You know, Janet yet, in terms yeah. of. Well, I like to work through it if we can. It's been no, no, we can't work while. through. I'm saying yeah. I would polish it up for you, just so you can vote on it the next. Unless you want to draft the language. What's the pleasure of the board on this? Board? Or you can make it subject to. Let me say this. We could draft something, make it subject to, and then you come in and sign it. We could vote on it subject to final review of the, the, the draft. Right. You could do it that we way. Could do it that, I, I think we could do it that way. And that yeah. way it gets, gets it going, gets it signed, and we can get moving on the other okay. part. Of it. Yeah, I'd be in favor of that. Yeah, me too. All right. Because I think you kind of have, I, I think what you had here was good. I think just adding that, for the most part, that pre-construction meeting yeah, prior pre to permits issued. And then you did right, mention, that, no, and you yeah. did want to provide notice, I think. It was well, that would be one? part, I think. To the to the residents that live there. Right, correct. Right. But I think that, that could be, that's probably part of pre-construction. Yeah, you can add it in if you like. That, I mean, that, um, at least that starts the conversation with the with everybody. I mean, I don't know. It gives people an opportunity. Do we have rules and regs for construction management? We actually plans? had we had neighbors that said that mm -hmm. they're all in favor of this. Yeah, oh, I know. I, I, I understand that. Just You're not just talking about like another public hearing for the no, the, no just no. A, a notice of hey, it's about to get started. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Just just as, as a courtesy and a safety because of the unique situation. If it wasn't like that, I, we wouldn't be doing that. And I I would probably just say a, a courtesy notice to neighbors of the street or something mm -hmm. that construction is going to begin two weeks prior or yeah, something. someone's got something prior to delivery or you just try to sure so, so could so do a, we could require a construction management plan that outlines their basic construction schedule who their contractors are identifies um, contact information that way if there's issues on site for any of the neighbors and that they've exactly. provided to the neighbors prior to the commencement of construction and that should cover most of the issues because before they get a permit, because they should basically have a schedule at that point where people can reasonably expect. I mean, things move around, but you can reasonably expect, hey, for this these two weeks, they're going to be excavating. You know, we're going to have big trucks for these two weeks. You know, and then maybe some reassurance that they'll regrade at the end of it. I don't know who manages the road, but, you know, it's going to be worse. <laughs> and, and I, that's a great idea. And I, yeah, I think that would be something that would they, would you recommend that be submitted at the time of the pre-construction meeting? Yeah, I, you know, I think they would do it after the pre-construction meeting because they can cover a lot of the construction issues in that meeting. They put together the management plan to memorialize basically that meeting and they go 
so a pre-construction meeting in, in in a subsequent yeah, yeah construction plan. management plan. plan doesn't have to be fancy but no. it's usually like out because concom usually has a few things to say about you know yeah. silt fences and things of that nature to mm -hmm. you know prevent your washouts that at least identifies all of those things in one place and the neighbors have something and that way if there's issues everybody's kind of covered very good thank you can we can we get a motion on the application for a special permit regarding case 2021-11 for 10 old populatic road would anybody like to take a stab at the motion or do you want me to make a stab um, I make a motion that in accordance with um, section 9 of chapter 40A of Massachusetts General Law that we accept the special permit granted to the subject of conditions specified here within those conditions as written and added um, a pre-construction um, meeting. meeting with the powers that be such as um, I would venture to say that that would be the building commissioner and you so yeah, yeah. I might even uh, concom might have to be there too conservation I might even in this case open it up to the fire chief or fire chief yeah not so much DPW all parts they don't maintain it but all parties needed anybody who's going to have to deal with this potentially. All, all parties <laughs> needed according to fire. rich <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. and also a uh, construction management plan then proposed before permit issued okay so we have a, we have a motion to approve a request for a special permit subject to subject to the conditions as drafted which will also include additional conditions the um, pre-construction meeting with town and residents and also a subsequent construction management plan uh, is there a second to that motion I second I second the second any discussion from anybody any further discussion and it would be subject to the, the, the final signature on the decision would be yeah I'll remove uh, su subject to further review of the draftsman's of the Correct. So, decision. subject to review prior to signature of the final yep. decision. You got to clean up some numbers and yep. have to remove uh, Mr. Sebastiano and so forth. So, so we have a second. Yes, All those second. in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. All right. Just going back to the information he provided the last time, there was some site plans and drawings. Are they on? I got them by email the last time. Yeah, I don't I think they're on the share drive. They're in the main. Um, I'm just a little concerned about the grading where he's doing his, his garage. Because he's got, there, there are houses on the other side, on the other road that goes. Uh, and I don't remember looking at that when he looked at the site plan the last time. He, he might have a lot more grading to do because it's very steep. You're very there. steep. I, I just, um, just have some reservation. About and I don't know how, how much he's excavating out of there to get a two bay garage in there. I mean, he's got to do a lot of grading. That's well, all let's I'm move saying. forward. That, yeah. that one's yeah. I, I, I just want to see the drawing again. Yeah. Sorry, well, I'll forward you the okay, drawing. Thank in you. terms of, uh, thank you. Yeah, once yeah. change anything. Yeah. They complain about the construction management plan. Send them Medfield's rules and regs from the <laughs> planning board. They've got a good set that are reasonable. I've been stealing theirs lately. Right. <laughs> oh, Good. construction yeah. management plan? Yeah, so, because they're going to complain to you about it just a little bit, but and they'll ask you what should be in it. And that's, okay. I'm, I've been using theirs. Just right. Thank you. <laughs> Good. And next on the agenda, we have town planner updates. All right. So we'll t take too much of your time, per se, on each one. Um, in terms of the first item, Citizen Planning and Training Collaborative, I sent out an email before. Um, they offer a bunch of trainings. So in terms of just processing for the office-wise, if you want to go on there and take training, sign up for it, pay for it, 
and then give me the receipt and I'll reimburse you so you can do it at, you know, it's up to you what you want to do. We have money in the budget to pay for it, but in terms of, uh, you know, just to make it simpler, honestly, um, for us in terms of, because everything's online these days, um, we haven't caught up that way in terms of paying for things. So we can go on, register, so it's, Yeah, pay, so it's provide. mass, it's a, uh, so it's masscpts.org is the website and then you just scroll down they have a whole bunch of trainings that are offered um, CPT. yep CPT. Oh, it, oh it's, it's mass okay m-a-s-s -S? yep, yep. m-a-s-s cpt mass cpts.org yep. correct okay. yep and then do we have like a sign in what's that we have sign ins or passwords or no no so you would sign up for just as like if you the oh, webinars okay. you can sign up for, and um, and you you know you'll pay for it, and then just give me the receipt and I can reimburse you. Oh, so like twenty five bucks a webinar or something like that. Yeah, I think They're so. They're usually pretty cheap. Yeah, it's pretty reasonable. That's what I like thought I saw. Yeah. When, Unless it's when got like credits it. associated with it, and then they're gonna ding you. Did you say CPTS? C Citizens it's Planner Training Collaborative. It's CPTC. 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 Sorry. They don't make this one easy. This one. Sitting by the seashore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There is another CPT. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. No, I'll send the link in. anyway. Yeah. I typed it in and it didn't come up. So then. Great. Send us the link again. That I'll send you the link thing. anyway. All but right. Because I looked through them and there are some good ones. No, there's that definitely like some to, good. Yeah. yeah. There's definitely some good options available to take a look at and uh, take advantage of. Uh, the next item, in terms of just an update with the uh, the wastewater treatment plant for Norfolk. Video. Town Center. Yep. <laughs> we did have the uh, the virtual Zoom meeting that was presented with Wolver and Kern. And next steps, as I mentioned that night, for whoever who was attending, so watch the rebroadcast. I'm going to be going to the conservation meeting in December to talk to them further about it. So that's that's the next step for me on the path forward. To, to Is this uh, using what's in existing already? No. So with this, this would be a construction permitting of a brand new wastewater treatment plant. Another new one. Okay. Yeah, a new one. Where, where, I, I did look at that, but where is it located at the moment, the existing? The existing one is, a, is on so top on of the, the hill, top by the on Meeting House tank. Road, yes. The, the condos are all tied into it. The condo and, and Walgreens, I think. And Walgreens is tied into it. Mm. But in terms of overall capacity left, there's only, I say only, there's probably about 11,000 gallons, I mean, 10 and gallons. So in terms of sewer flow, it's not that much. Okay. Um, so that's there. That's That one's also a little bit more complicated because that was originally permitted as a private wastewater treatment plant. So everybody pays a reservation for sewer flow. Mm -hmm. So everybody is divvying up that portion. This would actually be more of a conventional wastewater treatment plant, which mm -hmm. is paying on your usage. So, so um, the just for, uh, for interest, uh, you know, while I was looking at one of the other uh, one of the other efforts we're looking at at the moment, mm -hmm. um, I came across the fact that a lot of the local towns tie into the Medway Water Facility uh, Treatment Facility, right? There's a huge facility there in Medway. Have we investigated that for tying in from Norfolk? For, for like our septic water? systems pumpers take the discharge over to Medway. Are they, do they have a sludge? They have no, a sludge. It, no, Raynham's got the sludge plant. Who's got it? What does Medway have? Medway's got something. Mansfield's got a huge something or other, too. I just wonder if there's something we... we, we Explore uh, interconnections with right. other municipalities? Because they're pumping. They're pumping from uh, f uh, Franklin yeah. into Medway. Well, so here's the other side from a planning perspective. You know, you add that infrastructure, um, well, there's a cost associated with it, but then it also kind of changes the community's development pattern. Um, so what, at least in this project, it's concentrated just to the, the center, town center. Um, so again, if you start to extend sewer laterals outside the town, if it's a gravity line, then everybody who runs by them, they can tie into the system. So then you start to extrapolate potential connection to the wastewater. So we did, at least in terms of the study, there was discussion with the prison to connect to that one, but in terms of where they're at, they didn't um, want to take on a, a municipal client. Okay. And so they have to be so underused, though. 
what? That, that yeah. facility is enormous. That, that's uh, a, out behind my prison? house. Yeah, the prison one. Well, they are trying. Well, they're trying to up. Well, they first of all they got upgraded. To they upgraded it. They just upgraded they got, it. I don't know, man. You look at the buildings. You know it's worse underground. Yeah. It's right. Right. That's that's true. True. <laughs> well, they they've totally changed it since. They have. They have. Right. You see, in, you see in the good part, right? Were they right. discussing about the prison? Yeah. yeah. The wastewater treatment yeah. plant. Yeah. But, but they, they really don't. I, I will say that the, the conversation will at least they're not open to it. No, because they don't really want. We would have a mix of waste that would be coming. You know, I, the goal would be if the sewer came to the center, you might have some restaurants, some different commercial uses. They really just strictly want to deal with basically residential, you know, yeah. food. So they weren't interested. Um, I mean, things could change. Who knows? But and tying least, into them, you know, tying into them. But again, it would be similar. You want to get the line there as by gravity. Now, when Mansfield built theirs. There was the state forced Norton and Foxborough to buy in to it. Did we have we never been able? Have we never been forced to buy into like Medways or Franklin no. or anything like that? Yeah, no, well, we that's a good thing. Yeah, no, no. I'm glad. I mean, in some ways, you know, you know, again, it's a double-edged sword with sewer, right? Because you're piping and discharging somewhere yeah. else, where you know that's. Part of the problem is with some of the surrounding towns with the wastewater, right? So, uh, no, they're not forcing us to do That's that. That's a good so, thing. I, yeah, I mean, so at this point, no, it's on our own control in terms of how, right. how we do that. So, so this is really just a, a, a plant for town center, um, but we'd still need to go further. More, you know, we got to do more sampling. Uh, not sampling, but we got to do groundwater uh, modeling. Yet, there's a lot more permitting that would be involved. But at least the Conservation Commission uh, was at least open to the idea okay. to learn more about. So I'll go back to them in December. Talk What's the them. locale that you think of? It? So this is so behind the Freeman, you know where the yep. the fields are. Yep. There's the yep. woodland that's back. Kind of behind the town hall and Freeman Kennedy. It's in that. Yeah, back it's all in the back where the town hall used to be. No, on the other side of the track, though, on the, though, on the, the side school track. side. Oh, okay. So there's yes, there's the woodland side. there. Okay. Um, the Conservation Commission did give their blessing to the Park and Rec to use part of that area for additional soccer field. Okay. Um, you know, and but in terms of this, this is a much bigger sure. ask, so to speak. So I have to go back to them in December and talk to them a little bit further. Soccer fields are great places for leach fields. <laughs> they really are. They are. They are. Grass grows great. They do. They so. Really if there, if all the stars align, we would be, <laughs> we would be putting in a, a it's synergetic. It's great. Yeah, it we would be putting in a leaching field and then put a soccer field on top of it. Yeah, that would be ideal. I don't know if that's all going to work out. We can out pepper in some medical waste. So population. Yeah, from Southwood, oh. we'll be good to go. Uh, no medical waste. <laughs> no, no, we're not doing that. Um, so, at least that's my next step in yep. terms of okay. on the project timeline to go with it. Then. Uh, then we'll slide down to the next item on your agenda in terms of update um, regarding Southwood Hospital. I did, in, I did provide you an email yep. um, from Jacqueline Bard of GFI Partners to uh, Rebecca Woolley at DEP in terms of a, a proposed schedule to meet some to meet. Um, Deadlines that I've already missed in the past in terms of deliverables, in terms of the environmental assessment, and also uh, there is the radiological assessment that needs to be done as well on the property from the radiation. But so I just include that mm -hmm. um, for your information and take a yep. look, and give you an idea of the timeline associated with it. So we're we're sitting in November. 2021 this thing has a date all the way up until March of 2026 so quite a certainly be a lengthy process um, but I just wanted to provide that to you um, and I believe let's see if it says it here. And I know they are working to uh, make arrangements to meet with the, the PIP group 
associated with the site. Thank you. If there's anybody from the public or on Zoom that has any questions for Rich, this would be a good time. Okay. So seeing uh, Karen's dog. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you, Rich. Thanks Same. for those updates. All right. Next on the agenda for this evening is we have the minutes of October 20th. Oh, I just, sorry. Well, one more update. My apologies. Go right ahead. The construction updates yep. in terms of. We had a little bit of that tonight. Anyway. Yeah, I gave you a little quick preview. I'll just kind of. So we did have the pre-construction meeting for um, Lakeland Hills. Oh, you were up in my neighborhood. Up in your neighborhood. Where the cows behaving? Where the cows are. Yeah. Okay. Well, now we actually. Technically, it wasn't your neighbor. We had a meeting at Town Hall. But, oh, okay. Yeah. But we were talking about Lakeland Hills. Um, I, I know you're accusing yourself. I have. But uh, did you receive the notice about yet? I haven't um, received the notice yet. Okay. So one of the th and it probably hasn't gone out yet. But one of the things that was part of that comprehensive permit was a notice to all the abutters um, when they're getting ready to start construction. So they, they did pull the list from the assessor's office for the abutters and a letter will be going out shortly to the to the okay. to the neighbors to yeah, let we've them know. gotten all the letters before so yeah so you should get one because um, I know you're within the yeah. mailing range in terms of okay. uh, proximity I, sh I share a broad boundary line so yeah so you definitely can get the letter get so you it. haven't got it the letter is coming to you gotcha. um, but as I mentioned earlier tonight one of the things we talked about that pre-construction is to get that as-built plan with the foundation so we know um, where these are located from the start so we don't end up any issues down the road in terms of foundations being too close to property lines um, which in turn could put a deck so at least we have the foundation nailed down then we know okay if we I don't know exactly I have to go back to the permit but let's say it's got to be a 15 foot setback you can't put a deck and encroach onto that setback so we'll know from the start so hopefully um you know we don't end up we can avoid deal. some problems well the problems and we made them and they were aware of this we actually made them we're going to be on top of this quite a bit in terms of you know as they cut into the hill um we don't want the hill coming into seacock street um mm -hmm. so there'll be so this will as you know well it's a huge grade it's a big grade out. change this yes. will be a public road so in terms of oversight um, it, the um, so it's going to be a combination of beta will do construction op observations on behalf of the town including the zoning board but DPW will be out there as well so we just discussed they're gonna to have to be spot since on it's a, since it's a public way does do they have to or should they provide a right of way to another adjacent large park? No, they got. If I recall, to go back into the regs in the subdivision. I think they waived that provision to adjacent property. Okay, um, on the adjacent property, that would be nice to have a nice <laughs> right of way to the back of my property. <laughs> well, I don't want to get too deep oh, in so you're about <laughs> so um, so. You know, we get we can talk about it offline, but I'm pretty calm. Well, anyway, we probably should take that yeah not a discussion right, for here. Not, let's um, go away from the whole um, <laughs> But in terms of, I didn't know it was going to be a public way. I thought it was going to be private. Well, never even thought twice about it. I don't know. No, I know they it, sold it, it, um, it now. through the multiple reiterations of the provisions to the plan. You know, remember it started 104 units and then. It landed at 44 and back and forth. One of the, which I don't think is necessarily, a, it, it was a good conclusion in terms of these roads, that they are public roads. So um, that was a, that was a positive in terms of. I know negative probably from the town in terms of having additional roadway to have to maintain, um, and provide services to. But I think it gets away from having issues. I think long term in terms of, you know, residents living in those in those developments so um, so that's the positive aspect of it but because of that you know DPW would be more closely involved and because of the site conditions to make sure um, we don't have washout out onto Seacom Street so. I, 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 uh, I do know that they already installed the, the gas line and everything the, the road is looking better are they going to be 
doing any more work on the road or? No, so all the utilities have been brought off the road, so it's at the edge of the property line, so they won't be into but they, but they Seacon Street. Gas, but they install gas on Seacon yep. Street. How far did that go up? Went to Medfield. Yeah, it went to Medfield. All the other side? They went the other yeah, it went so down they, the so hill. They, they went from Campbell all the way to Medfield line. Yeah. So the water service, the water connection's off the right away. The gas is off the right away. Um, the electric, so they won't be out into Seacon Street, but um, they're going to need to, and we'll be watching it uh, for sure. Because uh, it will be a little bit tricky site, but in terms of that. Um, what was decided with the, um, I know we, 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 we sat here with many traffic, the results of many traffic studies. What ended up being the, you know, the last, the final decision regarding the blinking light, or is it just going to be a stop sign or some sort of, something to improve vision there, you visibility? Know, you know what I'll do is I'll I'll send you I'll resend everybody the decision because it has I ha I don't have a committed memory. I know we've, you know, we've met so many times. Yeah, for, yeah. It does, but it is. I'll email you the decision to all the members. You can take a look at the, the traffic in terms of mitigation. What needs to be done is included, in there, so we go okay. through it. Um, Thank you, Rich. And that's it. Sorry, uh, that's it for that piece. Thank you very much. Next on the agenda, we have our minutes from October 20th. I don't know if folks have a chance to review that. If you have, and someone wants to make a motion to accept those minutes as drafted. We have a motion to accept the minutes of October 20th, 2021. Make a motion to accept the minutes of October 20th, 2021 as written. A second. So, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um, we had we had some correspondence. More more of it was really to the building department for some violation notices that were issued by the building department. They're not before us, so there's nothing for us to act on there. Uh, we did act on 77 Boardman Street earlier in the evening. That was the withdrawal without prejudice on the previous ZBA vote from a year or so ago. Um, I don't know of any other new business or old business. Um, we do have, if, if it's up to the board, we have we have two cases that the hearings have been closed on. If you want to deliberate those tonight, we can do that. If we want to wait until, I think Rich's recommendation was do it at our next meeting in December. He's, he may take a stab at drafting some findings and Conditions and we could review that and it might help us along a little bit. But if somebody, if people want to deliberate tonight, I'd support that. If, they, if the board wants to wait, um, I think that would be fine too. I don't think there's any pressing timeline for the applicants on either of those two. But we're, we're holding I, cer I certainly know there isn't on behalf of the town, as I mentioned. There. Right. Um, I don't recall 84 Seacon Street. Does he have a time frame? I don't, I don't honestly recall what he had. Said, or didn't say in terms of uh, timeline. No, he didn't. Do, I don't, I didn't, do well, I don't want to remember one either. So. So, El, what's the pleasure of the board? If, does the board want to deliberate the, the solar arrays? Or? I, mean, I, I don't see it as being an issue with anything, but I don't know what you We usually go through findings and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I would. If you don't. If you choose not to deliberate, I would put it all together in a draft for you, so then you can just review it and, like we, d I yep. did just with uh, yeah. Poppy Laddick, and Poppy then Laddick. You that's the pleasure of the board. I want to do it. Yeah, yeah I would do, do that. Yeah. But Mr. Diamond's not on a press for time, right? Like I don't think so. He didn't, he didn't say anything. Hopefully, he doesn't tell me tomorrow he was pressed for time, but <laughs> right. um, he didn't say it ahead of time. I know. So I don't have any. Um, I, I know I'm new here, but I it, if there's a way to do it without. If, it, if it's all going to work out the same eventually, then now it seems like just as good a time as any. But again, I, I don't know. We can talk about it if you want. So you have, it's really up to you. So in terms of, as you, well, you, I know you've uh, experienced it personally in terms of with, before the planning board, um, which is kind of the planning board site plan does mirror here um, the special permit provisions in terms of process so you have 90 days um, the board that is the 
you know, deliberate and make a decision. And um, we can do it quicker. Not say we can't. Um, but he didn't say that he wanted to or he's something pressing. So yeah, he's usually pretty good about yeah. saying stuff if he wants. So no, it, we, I would say, it might be easier just to draft something, then you can review it for the next meeting. Okay. You know. Okay. Until you got, until you have I good. Put it, I just wanted yeah. to put it out there. Yeah. I mean, I don't see anything. No, I, I glaring outside of anything. But then that's my that's my main point is yeah. that if if it's thirty days and it's all going to end up the same way, I don't I don't know. If we can make a decision for for this resident of Norfolk tonight, you know, it seems like we might as well. But if it needs thirty days, it needs thirty days. I, I don't I'd be happy to vote a decision tonight. I I don't know how much we'd get on the. Take a vote, final subject to final draft of the decision. So at least he knows. But yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to just think in my head in terms of how much you'll gain. Um, you draft. I still got to clean it up um, and come in. Cleaner to have the draft. It's clean. It is a little cleaner. cleaner to have the draft. I would have to do all the individual findings tonight. Correct. It is a little cleaner. So then, so then we'll we'll wait. Um, We'll do it I'm, our, yeah, I'm fine with that too. I, we'll, I did. we'll do it our next. And we'll be thinking about that going forward. If we'll, we'll you know, we want to be responsive to the to the needs of the applicants, and we, if we don't know, we should ask whether it's me or somebody else. So we, not that we're pre-draft. Yeah, yeah, we're is trying to rush time, anything. Is there a time, time frame that we're looking for? Things, we should, we should there are many towns where the lawyers bring their own decisions for signature that sure. night. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're you can right. side eye it, but it works well. <laughs> right, it certainly helps. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So we'll deliberate that at the next meeting and um, vote that evening. Sure. Very okay. good. I don't think there's anything else on the agenda. Before we close the hearing, just I want to thank our two new board members. Thank you very much again, and I want to thank Katie from Norfolk Community Television and. Just two things. Uh, last week was Veterans Day. I want to thank all the veterans and their families. And next week is Thanksgiving. And I want to wish everyone a happy and safe Thanksgiving. And hopefully they can gather safely and uh, be thankful for all we have. So that's all I have. So if there's a motion to close the hearing, or if anyone has any other comments, this would be a good time. Uh, yeah, there's a great Thanksgiving Day parade on Saturday that I direct. And so it's if anybody wants to go down to Plymouth, it's probably the most viewed Thanksgiving Day parade in in, in America today. Um, it's been voted number number two by AOL as the best parade in, in America. So, so, so basically, AOL can suck it. Yeah, <laughs> much. But um, it's being televised this year also on Channel Five. Great! So, wow, yeah. that's yeah. awesome. Very cool. That's Congratulations. Awesome. That's cool. Yep. What time is that at? It's going to start at 10 o'clock on Saturday. So. Fantastic. And it will be live broadcast. Wow. wow. Yeah. First time ever. be at the Fox Farm. So this coming Saturday. <laughs> yep, this coming Saturday. Tally ho. Yep. And they may do a rebroadcast on Thanksgiving. But I'm not sure. Oh, wow. Yep, and then next year it's I'll being... I'll be crazy it, shopping it, weekend. It's and most likely going to be national. Christmas trees and all that other stuff, so... This is the first not time. ready yet. So it's <laughs> taken us 25 years to get there. For this was over. So the start's right at Plymouth Rock, the mail, the mail. Uh -huh. and the end is oh, yeah, up no by way. Benny's, if you know Plymouth okay. at all. So it goes up. So it's it's, it's a good two and a half mile parade. Cool. Yep, twenty one floats. I took my first trip to Plymouth. Yeah, I've never seen the rock. <laughs> <laughs> I was told that it was really underwhelming, so I was expecting the Liberty Bell, but that was cooler. It had a whole structure around it. It has a nice structure. It has a nice structure, yeah. and there's a nice broken rock down I was there. Just right. like I get a motion to close the hearing. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion to close the hearing. I second. second. I second the motion. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah.